Uh, hello, Priestlands. Welcome back, and I hope you had a great summer. I want to start uh, the year by talking to you about our whole school approach to questioning. Um, and essentially, I want to start with why do teachers ask questions? And there's three reasons why teachers ask questions in a classroom. One is called check for understanding, which basically means to see if you understand as a class, to see that if you do, we can move on. Uh, secondly is to increase engagement, to get more students uh, doing more thinking. And thirdly is to guide your thinking. So it's at times where students or groups of students uh, find something a little bit difficult and the teacher will ask a sequence of shorter questions in order to allow your brain to do uh, sort of sequential step-by-step -step thinking that we want you to do. So what are the options for students when a teacher asks the questions? Well, there's three options, really. There is uh, put your hand up and try and answer the question. So you think, then raise your hand and then try and answer if the teacher picks you. Or you think about it, uh, but you don't try and answer the question, which is kind of less preferable than uh, number one. Or the least preferable option would be to be distracted. Now, I suspect uh, in a classroom when a teacher ask a question, maybe up to a third of students might be distracted, possibly up to half. And that's obviously not good enough, because if you're distracted, then you are not thinking. If you're not thinking, then really you're not learning the stuff that we want you to learn. So what's the solution? Well, there's one solution which we have trialed last year, or certainly a number of teachers have tried last year. And it's a strategy called cold call. It's very, very simple. It is this. It's a teacher not using hands up when choosing students to answer questions. So they use a more random method rather than whoever's got their hands up the highest, if you like. Uh, examples of cold call might look something like this. So uh, describe the differences between animal and plant cells. Then there will be a pause. The pause is important because it allows all students the thinking time they need. So after the pause will come the name. So the fact that we put the name at the end means the students don't know who's gonna be chosen. So there's a higher chance that more students are thinking about the question. So pause is thinking time and the name comes at the end uh, to keep you all on your toes. So that's why it's there. Or another one here. Okay, you've got three minutes to jot down your ideas. Then I'll cold call to hear your thoughts. Again, in this example, the teacher's giving you some time, some thinking time, those three minutes. And that then our cold call is a clear sync signal for you to be, you've got to be ready because I might come to you. So that's an example of cold call. Benefits of cold call. Uh, one, you've got more students doing the thinking. And if more students are thinking, there's more students learning. Obviously, that's really important. Uh, it allows the teacher to hear from everyone in the classroom, not just the ones which want to put their hands up. That's important also. And thirdly, sometimes the teacher wants to know what you alone are thinking. So obviously that's a benefit of cold call also. If you're not sure of an answer, what should you, should you do? Well, you've got two options, which I'm gonna give you. Uh, so option one is you can say, I'm not sure, but, and then you give it your best shot. That's really, really good because we get to find out what's in your head. Obviously we just don't want the right answers always. We wanna know what's, what you're thinking. So I'm not sure, but then give it your best shot. Or you could say, I'm confused about, and then you tell the teacher what you're confused about. Again, there's some good thinking which happens there. So you've got those two uh, sentence stems to help you. Does this mean you're not allowed to put your hand up in lessons ever? No, the short answer is, I can think of a couple of options where it'd be good to put your hands up. So when can you put your hand up in a lesson? Well, option one is when the teacher signals. So, okay, class, hands up to answer the following question. What's the function of? So clearly the teacher is signaling here they want a hand up to the to answer the question. Or if you have a question, so when you have a question to ask, obviously you can put your hand up in the, in the, in the lesson. So to summarize and remind you, I've made a poster which will be uh, put up in the classroom. You can see if you can see in a second. So here's a version of it there. So I'll let you look for that. And uh, hopefully over the course of time, uh, this will become our embedded method around the school. Thanks for listening.